This four part video series is intended to demonstrate how you can utilize mathematics to help prove or disprove various models used to explain and understand the earth on which we live. Since early 2015, a phenomenon I term the flat earth renaissance has swept the alternative media scene on the internet, particularly here on YouTube. One of the proofs often cited by flat earth proponents is what is commonly termed the lack of curvature whereby it is claimed that objects can be seen across distances which should be physically impossible if we live on a giant ball with a radius of 3,959 miles. The logic is that as objects get further away from a viewer, they should drop below the horizon according to simple geometry. If it can be proven that objects in the distance do not disappear from view as they ought to, then we cannot be living on a giant spinning ball which we are all trained from a young age to believe we do live on. One simple equation for determining this rate of curvature is given as 8 inches times the mile squared. In other words, the drop from the tangent line of the Earth to a distance from the observation point should be 8 inches multiplied by the square of the distance between the observation point and the point of the Earth being observed. For instance, an object 5 miles away will be sitting on Earth which ought to have dropped 5 times 5 times 8 inches from the tangent or 200 inches or approximately 17 feet. Similarly, an object 30 miles away will be on Earth which ought to have dropped 30 times 30 times 8 inches or 7,200 inches or approximately 600 feet below the tangent line. Put simply, if an object less than 17 feet tall can be seen 5 miles away or an object less than 600 feet tall can be seen 30 miles away, then the Earth cannot be a ball with a radius of 3,959 miles as claimed by NASA and all other establishment institutions. This 8 inches times the mile squared formula has been largely popularized by leading flat earther Eric Dubay, whose book The Flat Earth Conspiracy and accompanying documentary of the same name has played a significant role in the recent and sudden rise in interest in the flat earth theory. It should be made clear that Dubay does not claim to have devised the formula himself, nor does he take credit for popularizing it. However, for brevity's sake, over the course of this series, the 8 inches per mile squared formula shall be referred to as Dubay's formula. Now, other leading flat earthers, such as Mark Sargent of Flat Earth Clues fame, have begun repeating this simple mathematical formula when offering physical proofs that the Earth is not a ball. The claimed lack of curvature based on this formula is seen by neo-flat earthers as one of the strongest indications that the ball Earth model is demonstrably fallacious. But is this formula based on sound mathematics? In this series, I intend to walk the viewer through the maths behind the maths so that any person can understand not only which curvature formula they ought to be using, but why. Over the course of the series, we will cover some simple mathematics, including geometry, trigonometry, and algebra. At times, this process may seem tedious, especially to those viewers who are proficient in mathematics. My purpose in going into such depth is to ensure that anybody who follows the series closely will be able to see, for themselves, with their own eyes, that the curvature formulas in question can be derived from accepted mathematical formula. I also hope to demonstrate that the mathematics involved is within the grasp of the average person and that an understanding of basic mathematical concepts and how to apply them can be a powerful tool in one's intellectual arsenal, no matter what their beliefs about the shape of the earth. Please note that although I have attempted to be technically accurate with my terminology and conceptual explanations throughout the series, I am not a mathematician and it is quite likely that I will have made trivial or superficial errors at one or more points throughout the presentation. I'm just a lay person who has attempted to revise the maths I learned in high school for the purpose of furthering my own research regarding ball earth skepticism and for putting this presentation together in the hope of potentially assisting others. I am confident, however, that the fundamental calculations and equations presented are sound, even if the nomenclature might at times be less than stringent. In part two of this series, I will show how geometry can be used to calculate the drop from the tangent line intersecting the earth at point A to the dropped earth at point B. In part three of this series, I will show how trigonometry can be used to calculate the drop from the tangent line intersecting the earth at point A to the dropped earth at point B. And in part four of this series, I will demonstrate how we can devise a more precise formula for calculating the obstruction 
caused by the Earth's curvature. So please move on to part two, and I hope you enjoy the series.